Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back with our Marshall Goldsmith certified coach and so much more. He's a friend and he's here helping so many bring freedom to potential with his coaching programs, his one-on-ones, his group, his corporations. He's helping everyone in every aspect of life, not just pilots like himself and (laughs) um, those in the Air Force and the Air Business and the military, you know. There you go. He's a man who wears many hats, working on some books, and it's really hard to introduce him, but he's someone that you can learn a lot from, and he will motivate you, hold you accountable, but guaranteed results and client testimonials. Uh, you can read about them. Go to the website. Uh, talk to anyone. His reviews are amazing. Coachingforrelevance.com. See, Randy, uh, it's hard to introduce you because you're just a man who's like... <laughs> well, I, I don't know. You know, kind it, of thing. Yeah, I, no, but I you're modest your and humble, and yeah, you you've yeah. helped change the lives of so many, and continue to make that your passion. So we commend you for that. Honored yeah. to have you here. I've known him for a long time at this point. Um, yes, and I've been honored to be a friend of yours too. So it's uh, amazing. Well, yep. Thank you so much. Okay, so what did you want our listeners to know for today? I know we're going to get into another area of focus, which you're going to excel at with our four Bs amongst other stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do here, what I thought I'd bring this time is, is something, it's a concept of four Bs. And I'll tell you why it was called that uh, before, but what it really uh, uh, brought out was it was brought out by a pastor in the area here uh, when he was uh, speaking and, uh, I'm not going to bring so much the faith-based, which he applied it just in the faith-based concept. I'm not going to bring the faith-based aspect of it so much here today, but it's these four Bs are truly central and aligned with true leadership success. And you'll kind of see why in just a second. But what we'll do is we'll go through those and you can bring in any questions or any thought that you have uh, as we go through this. I'll, uh, I'll welcome that. So it's uh, but it's an interesting concept It's called the three B's. And um, the reason is called, or excuse me, not the three, the four. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, four Bs. And um, and and the reason that is called the four Bs is because it's four words that each start with B, and kind of thing. Go ahead. B, B. I don't even know the Bs. So I'm sitting here trying to think about the Bs. The birds and the bees. Now, what are the bees? I don't know. <laughs> you know what? They're, that's where I'm going next. Good yeah, question. I'm like, I'm they, like, hmm, okay. Yeah. And, and what I'll do is is I'll kind of mm-hmm. mention each one, but then I'll just give some thoughts as to when you're talking about leadership and really leading your team successfully and, and to reach radical results, particularly in a unpredictable, changing, challenging VUCA environment. You know, these are things you got to be thinking about. And and the first B that I will we'll talk about is the uh, is the B. It's the word belief you know, kind of thing and believe. And one of the things that I want to just kind of share from a leadership perspective on this, and I'll kind of expand on one aspect of it when we get to the second B, but the first B of believe is when, when you're looking at where your team is going, when you're looking at this strategic vision and mindset, is your belief real or not? Because here's the thing, one of the real critical questions in that is how clear is your true situational awareness? Uh, You know, are you aware of, uh, you know, of the factors that could come on when you're looking at the different aspects of evidences of things that are maybe coming into play or sneaking in as you go forward for your team? Are you aware of those factors that you maybe didn't expect? Are you aware of what are the one or two factors that might sneak in all of a sudden that you would have never predicted kind of thing? And are you clear on how you're going to make that work uh, kind of thing? And it really is this aspect of st- strategic uh, vision, a belief in where we're going. And it's not just selling myself to try to make everybody believe, yeah, we can get there. You know what? That's very superficial. And that's very common with what a lot of people do today. But it's this deeper vision of believing, yes, we can go. You know what? As we go forward, we can adapt and adjust and tweak if we need to. 
in going forward. And our team can do that. Our team is ready to do that. And we believe in each other. And that's, uh, that's, that's one aspect of this whole aspect of believe, you know, do you truly, is your belief true or is it false? Are you just selling yourself? Are you just trying to get everybody to just capitulate to you or is it really truly valid? And so this aspect of believe is deeper than most people uh, realize. And there's a dovetail with that that goes into the second B <laughs> kind of thing. And the second B talks about, uh, you know, are you are you uh, uh, belonging? You know, when you look at our team, is it something where each of us, including me, feel like we are truly belonged here. And that doesn't mean just because I got hired to be in this position. It's deeper than that. It's, is there an essence where we are so come together in synergy that, yeah, we're, we're each of us belongs on this team and each of us belongs in the synergy and the teamwork. And I, and I'll tell you, there's a lot of subtle ways that, that leaders uh, need to kind of help their team members feel that. In fact, I, I shared this on one of our shows a long time ago, kind of kind of thing. And um, but there was uh, when I was a, a contract rep and the site manager at Griffiths Air Force Base, I, I shared with you one time where it was just uh, right at the end of a meeting that we had a team meeting um, where I was leading it. But I could tell that a lot, several of the people on the team we're having this sort of vision of, of perhaps a, a, a way to go. But in my mind and listening to him, I could tell, yeah, that's going in a good direction. And, and you know what, instead of doing what most people do where I try to sneak in and control everything, maybe so I can get credit for it or something. All I did is I'd let them explore while they sat there. And there was, there was one guy who was a co-pilot who was a fellow F4 guy, uh, as I was at the time, he, uh, was sat down he was going to draw out some notes on a pad and he sat down but before he actually got in the seat he looked up to me because he realized his boss was standing right there and he looked at me and all i did is uh, jill if, if i was looking at you if you were him all i did is i looked at him and i winked and i nodded my head that's all i did and you know what he felt that approval he smiled and he sat down and started putting some notes down and stuff but you know what he got a chance to experience that sense of belonging where we're all one and we're all part of this team and everything. And I was letting them be a part to the extent that was appropriate and, and good and everything. And so it, it, you know, that's the second B the first B is uh, like I said, uh, believe the second, the, or the first believe was <laughs> the first B was believe the second believe B was belonging. Does do the people in your team truly experience in here that they belong and you all belong together as one? And then the third B talks about what somebody uh, we've talked about a few times is this aspect of becoming. You know what? In addition to where you and your team currently are, who are you truly becoming as a team? with you as a leader, rather than just trying to force everybody to just capitulate to you what you want it to be and stuff. How is your leadership, regardless of where you are, how is it truly becoming as you go forward? And in, and in a sense, how are you modeling that behavior, becoming growth to your team so that they'll want to follow that journey as well? in the becoming and it's interesting I, I think i've shared i think you've heard me share this before that you know one of the things that i've told uh, uh people one of my favorite uh lines that we used to say in the martial arts i've got my black belt in taekwondo and kind of thing and uh, one of the things we used to say in martial arts and i agree with it 120 percent bad math but good <laughs> good uh understanding uh, i said as soon as you think you've arrived it's solid proof that you haven't and it's uh, and I've had people ask me, when am I going to retire? And I go, when I take my last breath, because I'm not going to stop. And uh, and so it's this aspect of becoming regardless of where you are and regardless of where your team are. 
team is. A lot of people tend to just stay right there and then talk about themselves to get all the pats on the back. Guess what? There's still some journey that you can grow in. And are you going to do that? Are you going to lead that for your team as you go forward? And so it, it's interesting that those first three uh, Bs, like I said, are believe, belong, and become. And who are you becoming? And, uh, and, and everything. And then the fourth uh, a B is simply this aspect of build. Based on who you are, based on what your team is, who your team has truly become, based on what you're showing, based on what you're modeling, based on what other people are doing to experience you, um, you know, uh, what are you really building? Both in your organization, in your life, in your family, perhaps, in your team, uh, you know, what are you truly, truly building as a result of that? And so it, it's very interesting that, uh, you know, how are you really getting there and how, what's the difference you're really making? And, um, um, and I've been very amazed a couple of times when people that I worked with have made uh, some amazing comments about me. In fact, this, this one person that I work with, you know, uh, she and I have kind of worked together, you know, a, a, a number of times over the last 20 years kind of thing. And, um, uh, and we just, we passed each other in the hall and it was like, Hey, Hey, how's it going? How's it going? And, um, and she w walked up to me and by the way, there was nothing romantic here. This was not anything unprofessional, but she said, Randy, I'll tell you something. This was that she said, you're amazing. And, um, and all I did is say hello and, hey, how's it going, you know, kind of thing and everything. And it's, um, but, you know, are you really making your team feel that? And I, I know that uh, in talking with one of the real senior managers, uh, he he actually told me one time, I think I shared this on a show quite some time ago, but um, uh, he, he shared with me, he said he was asking about me around the building and he said people were talking to me through the roof kind of thing again is that really all about me no but it's about their experience it's about little things do i want people to just pat me on the back and do you know all, no, no, you know that's not important but it is to be able to make an impact perhaps to make people really believe to make people really feel belonging uh people really are becoming uh and uh and are you really building that within your team, within your journey with what you're doing? And so I found it interesting that, um, that like I said, when this pastor said those four B's, as he put it, I said, you know what, that's pure leadership. And, and, and it is. And so, like I say, just those four B's of the, uh, uh, of belief, of belonging, of becoming and building. And what are you really creating in your team? And I know, as you know, Jill, the uh, uh, movie documentary is is in the process of uh, being worked in Hollywood for my life's journey and all. And one of the final comments I made uh, in that, and it's also going to be one of the final things in my autobiography, which is uh, probably within a couple of months of being uh, uh, published, um, you know, is, you know, I, I don't really care if people don't remember my name after I'm dead and gone but what I hope is that they remember that there was this one guy that brought out this one insight and they applied it to their life and it made a complete difference and and you know what kind of impact are you really having and you know what when you look at these what he called the four b's and I can I, can, I think that's kind of a neat way of looking at it um to what extent are you really doing that in your team and in your organization? It's not about selling yourself. It's what people experience. It's about how you are growing and you're making their experience of you a little bit different, a little bit better, uh, a little bit more amazing in some respects. And, and you know, you know that you're really doing a good job when people don't come to you just because you sold them on something, which is so often you know, uh, in our society, kind of what people do, but it's, it's people come because they want you to do it. Not just because you sold them on something, but there's something about that, that they want to sort of become part of them. And they, they want you to do that. 
and your team to do that. And so it's it's just sort of interesting when you look at those four Bs that he called um, and look at how that sort of fits in with a uh, um, leadership aspect, particularly when you're talking about challenging environments, because guess what? There's times where you can't just tell your team what to do, but there's times where you have to go in and connect and model with them for each of those four Bs uh, uh, as they're going forward, particularly if it's a challenging unpredictable and, uh, uh, you know, uh, VUCA environment, so to speak. And um, well, how do so, you work so with people think. that have different beliefs? We all have different beliefs, right? You and it's what? hard to work ahead. Yeah. And, and what you just said is you have my compliments here, Joe, because oh. that is key, that is huge. And when you understand a coaching facilitative style, it isn't telling them what to do and how to do it but it's connecting with where they are in the journey okay. they are on. And you, you help them get a sense of uncovering their possibilities with what we're, with where they are. And the way that you, the way that you do that in a lot, a huge way is ask, learning to ask the right questions instead of talking about yourself. And instead of just, telling them this or that, but asking the right questions. In fact, I, I think I shared this with you because it's a good answer to your question. And by the way, you have my compliments. That, a fantastic question kind of thing. But Just a I, regular question. I know, yeah, I've go. worked with people who don't share the same beliefs in the workplace, out of the workplace. So I'm talking both, but, yeah. but go ahead. <laughs> and, and if you think about it too, you know, just kind of share this one example. But if you, if you think about it too, that when you have people that have different beliefs, um, there's some questions that have to be explored. Is their beliefs causing their uh, interaction to be dysfunctional for the team? If so, you may have to address that yep. a little bit and coach it. And if it doesn't go anywhere, if they become very narcissistic, it may be that they go somewhere else you know, kind of thing, possibly. Um, but it, it may be, if, if you have somebody that it may be that their view of that is this is all they knew about. I didn't know about anything more. And if mm -hmm. they start, you know, one of the things that as a leader, I'll, I look for sometimes is when people start to kind of look at a bigger picture of it, which encompasses various things that they weren't aware of before, I look at yeah. what their reaction is. If their reaction is, oh, you know, interesting. Now, it may take a little bit. It may take a little bit of time for them to really kind of explore how to, how to mold this in. But if it's somebody that's just sort of narcissistic and arrogant, arrogant that yes. may cause for another issue. And, um, and so it, and it's interesting that when you're talking about leading, just being a coach can, largely do that now share uh kind of I, i've shared this quite a while back but i shared this when i was uh, a coaching client that i was working with asked me to get together with some of the youth at his um uh, apartment complex and and do some coaching with the youth and there was one we were talking about impact and leadership this one day with the youth and and they were basically from nine to 13 years old kind of thing and uh, this one little girl goes, well, I have a question. We were talking about impact. And she was on her hands like this, kind of going back and forth. You could see. And you could see she goes, I said, what's your question? And she looked at me and she said, um, do you have to be alive to have impact? Ooh. And, I, and all I did is I looked at my colleague and he looked at me and his eyes were this big around. And I kind of winked at him. And I looked back at her. I said, you know what, young lady? You have my compliments. That's a great question. Now, most people would try to answer it. What I did is I looked at the other youth there. I said, what do you guys think? And there was one 12 year old girl who lost her younger brother about a year and a half before that. He died of some physical thing. I don't remember exactly what it is, uh. but she was talking about it. And I told her, I said, do me a favor. Don't you don't share anything you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And I said, but how does he impact your life today? And she looked at me and she talked to me about how much she still thinks of him and loves him and feels mm -hmm. love and here for him and all this. 
And, uh. and, I, and I looked at her, I said, you know what? Thank you for sharing that. And then I looked back at the other little girl and I, I looked at her and I said, so what's the answer to your question? And she was sitting there like this, still kind of like this. And she looked at me because no, you don't have to be. I went, there you go. Kind of yeah. thing. And so when you're the leader, guess what? If there's a lot of those issues that are taking place in your team, it may be that you're not leading it well. Mm -hmm. It may be that your leadership needs to improve for the way that you connect with your team and, and bring that belief and bring the belonging, but also bring the, you know, becoming aspect out of your team members. Uh, and, you know, there's some times where you may have to model that yeah. in the way you are becoming. And that's a part of leadership. You know, when people are following you and you're doing it right, guess what? That can make a difference in their life. So those are all aspects of kind of, it's a great question that you th uh, mentioned there. That those are just beat. some aspects. Uh, those are just some aspects about um, uh, that. But yeah, it, it's just an interesting aspect when you look at those four and you look at the four Bs that relate to uh, that aspect of real true leadership. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. We still got the four, three more minutes, so we could still talk. Wow. Okay. That's great. What other questions come up uh, in, in your head about the four Bs that people have brought up? I mean, I love the one you just shared about the little girl. Um, do other people question that too? Well, you know what? Pe people don't, qu adults don't generally question it as much, but one of the things that you have to do mm -hmm. sometimes is are you picking up on the nonverbal yeah. communication in the person you're talking to? Because a lot of times you may see it in their eyes where they are, you know, don't know where to go or they're just sort of sitting there. And sometimes you have to ask a, a, a simpler question that gets them sort of going. And and it was sort of interesting. I uh, I shared uh, uh, this one with the guy that had me speak to those youth and everything. Uh, and it's really this belief. Um, do you are you aware of the nonverbal com communication in the person when they do or don't believe? And, and one of the things we were talking about on Sherpa coaching, what was called why it matters. It's the fundamental thing that drives people. And he was a defense attorney and he, um, and um, when we were talking about the why it matters and getting him to kind of sort that out, he said, well, I think my why it matters is just to win being an attorney, you know, kind of thing. Well, his entire nonverbal communication, I didn't believe a bit of that because his head was down. There was nothing in him that was excited. There was nothing. So I just got him talking. I just, I just asked a few questions, got him talking and he talked about, and I won't go into him here because we don't have enough time, but, but he uh, came up with another situation that everything changed. I mean, his whole, his body language changed. He was leaning forward like this. His eyes were this big around as he was talking and all this. And what he realized is that his real why it matters was not to um, uh, to win, but to be right. And And he realized that being right was what he was all about. And in fact, that's one thing that made him go into defense attorney um, instead of prosecuting attorney, because in defense attorney, uh, he realized that the, uh, uh, you know, all of the legal aspects of this country says that even if somebody's guilty, they're at least entitled to defense, you know, kind of thing. And he realized that that aspect of being right in everything that he does, win, lose, or draw, being right was his real why it matters. And it changed all of that nonverbal communication on him. So when you're talking to people like that and they're struggling with some of that, as a leader, are you aware of how that maybe didn't show through? And there's some more conversation that needs to be had. Not you telling them what to do, but you connecting with them in a way that makes them feel, right, that you believe in them. Also making making them feel that they're, uh, you know, uh, that, that they belong in the team and everything, you know, and all that. And all of those are sort of aspects about it. But it's just an interesting picture of, as you said, the four B's. And that's that's the way he described it. But I think that's a good way to look at it. 
uh, on those four things. Um, to what point uh, for leaders? To at what point are you perhaps doing that well right now, or at what at what point are you not doing it well? At what point are you getting in your own way and getting in the way of your team to be able to really reach radical success? And so it's interesting on that. Beautiful. And that's what you're here doing, helping so many. Uh, how can we contact you? Well, uh, it's uh, like I said, uh, you can go to my website, uh, coachingforrelevance.com. And uh, on the uh, front page, right down at the bottom, it shows my email and it shows my uh, cell phone. Um, and uh, anybody can reach out uh, as, uh, as as you know, because I've said it a number of times, but uh, I'm not going to do any real big sales things. So if somebody just wants to have a chat, we'll have a chat. All right. Kind of Thank thing. you. And uh, I welcome any conversations. And Jill, it's always a pleasure to, to work with you on the show. Same here. Always. Uh, he's a fan favorite of the station. Uh, both uh, uh, Steve and I agree. So thank you so much. Steve and I have been friends for about 20 something years. So I, I love when you talk to him. You talk to me, but we both really like you. So thank Sounds you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, my friend. <laughs> it's true. Thank you. Have a fantastic day. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.